Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we'll be diving into a tutorial on overweight landings. In today's tutorial, we'll explore the following. What constitutes an overweight landing and the circumstances that may require us to execute one? Key configuration and approach techniques to manage speed, flaps, and braking when above maximum landing weight and a step-by-step -step look at the QRH procedure to execute a safe overweight landing. So, let's first define what an overweight landing is. It's sometimes called a heavy landing and occurs when the aircraft's gross weight exceeds the maximum landing weight. The maximum landing weight is a key structural limitation and it can vary depending on the aircraft variant such as the A319, A320, or A321, as well as the specific configuration set by the airline. Exceeding the maximum landing weight means the airframe and landing gear experience extra stress and the aircraft must undergo a thorough inspection before it can depart again. It's important to note that a heavy landing is different from a hard landing. A hard landing occurs when the landing may have resulted in exceeding a load limit on the airframe or landing gear. This can happen even when the aircraft is landing below its maximum landing weight, particularly during severe turbulence or wind shear on approach. FCTM guidance specifies that overweight landings are not actively planned at the start of a flight. Fuel is carefully calculated to ensure the aircraft lands within safe weight limits. However, unforeseen circumstances may require an overweight landing as the safest option. These situations could include a medical emergency, a fire on board, or a severe system failure. In such cases, a quick return to the departure airport or a diversion to an en route alternate airfield may be necessary. As a result, the aircraft may land without having burned enough fuel to meet the standard landing weight. If an overweight landing is deemed necessary, the factored landing distance, or FLD, using the FlySmart application or an equivalent tool is required. This calculation ensures that the crew has enough runway to safely bring the aircraft to a stop given the higher landing weight. In some cases, the FLD might dictate a different landing configuration to maximize safety. Approach planning for an overweight landing involves a few unique factors as well. Due to the higher weight, achieving an early stabilized approach is recommended. A long, straight-in approach or a wide visual pattern is often the preferred setup, allowing the crew to configure and stabilize the aircraft well ahead of the final approach fix. At very high weights, there's a close relationship between VFE Config 1, which is the maximum speed to extend the first stage of flaps, and VLS in clean configuration which is the lowest selectable speed in the clean configuration. This means that before selecting the first flap setting, the crew needs to carefully manage the speed by temporarily disconnecting the auto thrust. They'll decelerate to VLS or slightly below before selecting config one. Once config one is established, auto thrust can be re-engaged and managed speed can be used. For high weight approaches, VAP should be established at the final approach fix. As the aircraft descends toward the runway, selected speed is used to gradually reduce the speed to reach VLS just as the aircraft crosses the runway threshold. This keeps the aircraft's energy at a minimum, avoiding unnecessary momentum upon touchdown. VFE next for config 1 and 2 may be below the maneuvering speeds, i.e. green dot and or S speed. To extend the slats and flaps, the crew must select the speed on the FCU to decelerate to VFE next. When established at config 1 or 2, the crew can re-engage the auto thrust if disconnected and use manage speed again. Landing configuration is another critical decision point. If the aircraft's weight allows for a safe go-around in config 3, the crew will likely use config full as this configuration offers optimized landing performance. However, if the weight is too high for a safe go-around in config 3, the landing will be performed in config 3 with the go-around in config 1 plus F configuration. This setup meets climb gradient requirements, 
even under challenging conditions like high altitude or high temperatures. Should a go-around be necessary in config 1 plus F after an approach in config 3, it's important to note that VLS in config 1 plus F may be higher than the VLS in config 3 by about 5 knots. In this scenario, the recommended procedure is to follow SRS orders, which ensure the aircraft accelerates up to the displayed VLS. Remember, VLS config 1 plus F is calibrated at 1.23 VS1G while regulatory minimum go-around speed requires only 1.13 VS1G. Thus, even though it feels fast, this speed requirement is comfortably met. The crew should be aware that the transition from minus 3 degree flight path angle to the go-around climb gradient requires a lot of energy, and therefore some altitude loss may be experienced. Now, let's take a look at the specific QRH procedure. First, the checklist advises using configuration full for landing, unless an abnormal procedure specifies otherwise or there are landing performance limitations. The reason for this is that configuration full provides the most lift and allows for the lowest approach speed. This is critical during an overweight landing because it reduces the aircraft's landing distance and helps manage the higher landing weight safely. Next. Applying the landing distance procedure is necessary because an overweight aircraft requires a longer runway to come to a stop. Ensuring you have the appropriate landing distance calculated is crucial for a safe landing, especially in situations where runway length might be a limiting factor. During the approach, the procedure gives the option to turn packs 1 and 2 off or leave them to be supplied by the APU. This is to maximize engine performance since turning off the packs reduces bleed air demand on the engines, thereby providing more thrust if needed. If you're landing with a configuration other than full, the checklist recommends using config 1 plus F for a go-around. This is because, in an overweight situation, a go-around requires additional thrust and lift. Config 1 plus F provides a good balance between drag and lift, making it ideal if you need to abort the landing and climb out again. Additionally, maintaining speed at VLS, which is the lowest selectable speed, at the runway threshold is emphasized to ensure reduced aircraft energy upon touchdown, which will minimize the landing roll distance while still providing adequate lift and control. Next, the checklist advises minimizing vertical speed at touchdown. The purpose here is to reduce the impact force on the landing gear, which is critical when landing overweight. A softer landing helps prevent potential structural damage to the aircraft caused by the increased kinetic energy of a heavier aircraft. From a structural standpoint, an A320 can withstand a vertical speed of up to 360 feet per minute upon touchdown at maximum landing weight. If this rate is exceeded, maintenance inspections are mandatory as the higher rate would subject the airframe to additional stress. For landing, it's advised to increase the flare height. The flare is typically initiated at around 30 feet. However, for an overweight landing, increasing the flare height provides more time to decelerate and soften the touchdown, reducing the risk of damage to the landing gear. You might notice it requires a more pronounced pullback on the side stick to arrest the rate of descent due to the aircraft's inertia. The checklist then directs you to use maximum reverse thrust as soon as possible after the main wheels touch down. This is to assist in quickly slowing down the aircraft since the brakes alone may not be sufficient due to the increased landing weight. After the nose wheel has touched down, the focus shifts to applying the brakes as determined by the landing performance. Once the landing is completed, turning on the brake fans is advised if they are installed due to the extreme temperatures and potential tire deflation. After an overweight landing, the crew must complete a thorough technical log entry. This entry will record details such as the aircraft's gross weight at touchdown, speed at touchdown, approximate vertical speed, the overall quality of the landing, and the level of braking applied. This log entry serves as an important reference for maintenance teams, helping them assess any potential stress on the aircraft. Overweight landings may be rare, but when they happen, precise procedures and careful planning keep everyone on board safe. Understanding the factors we've covered today, from approach planning 
and speed management to landing configuration and braking is essential for a safe and effective overweight landing. Our popular A320 tech quizzes are now part of an exclusive newsletter membership designed to provide you with even more value. As a member, you'll receive four brand new A320 tech quizzes every month, one each Monday, delivered straight to your inbox. You'll also receive exclusive deep dives into A320 systems, procedures, and techniques that go beyond this YouTube content. And you'll also gain access to bonus content and other surprises to keep your knowledge fresh and up to date. If you're interested, click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to sign up today. Thanks for tuning in, and let's take your A320 knowledge to the next level.